welcome back. Today's video we're finally ready to install the new manifold plate and intercooler on the 1UZ. So we'll get into the pulling the belt off and disconnecting the throttle cable and all that sort of stuff. So let's get into it. Okay so we've got the lighting set up a little bit better so you can see things. So the belt routing on this is actually pretty simple now that they've got the hydro fan gone and the AC compressor. You can see very, very simple belt routing there. All we've got to do is back off that one tension over there. This is a 14 millimeter bolt. So we'll do that now and pop this belt off. Okay. Pull the tensioner down. Belt comes undone. As easy as that. So next step is to disconnect the throttle. So we'll get onto that. Okay, and just like that, our throttle cable is disconnected. Uh, I quickly disconnected the manifold pressure sensor, which is that black plug back there. And around here, if we can sneak in there, we've got our um, TPS. And then on the other side, there is the idle control valve. Um, so yeah, those three plugs off. Um, the last thing to do is that we have here this black hose here. It's actually just a hose that goes to the inside of the cabin there and it's got a filter on it because believe it or not, as loud as this thing is, I never used to be able to hear the supercharger warning from in the car, uh, which is a little bit sad. So with that hose going in there, we get a little bit of a whoop. So that's pretty cool. But um, yeah, we'll just undo that one hose and then we'll be ready to take the supercharger off. I jumped the gun a little bit there. There's actually this second hose here. This just goes to the vacuum booster for the brakes. So that links up on here. So it's sort of intake of the supercharger, but after the throttle body. So that way it generates the vacuum and yeah, it works great. But I loosened that off. So it's just simple to pull that off. And now we're ready to undo the bolts for the supercharger. Okay, so to get to all the bolts, we actually have to pull the intake elbow off the back because there's a bolt directly underneath it, which is a bit of a pain. But nonetheless, we'll quickly rip this off and get into it. So now we're ready to pull the supercharger off the top plate. Usually you get a second person to help me with lifting this off because it's a little bit awkward, but it's just me here at the moment, so let's see how I go. So that was actually super easy to lift off. Usually when I reuse these gaskets, I use a little bit of this aviation gasket sealant to reseal them just as you know, a fail safe to make sure that they don't leak. Uh, it's a non-hardening sealant, but it usually glues these down very, very well. Uh, last time I did this, I obviously must have used a new gasket because I didn't have any need to do it. Um, but next step is we'll unbolt this top plate and peel this gasket off. As you can see, it's in extremely poor condition. Um, paint didn't last very well on it and it's very weathered. The car was sitting outside for a while, which didn't help, but yeah. Anyways, we'll get into this and pull this plate off.
here we have the manifold with the top plate removed. Now a couple of people have asked me about the design of this intake manifold and you can basically see it's pretty simple that it's just a 40 millimeter aluminium box that's welded to these tubes and if we can squeeze down here they are welded to those flange plates that bolt to the stock lower intake manifold. You can even see some of that aviation gasket sealant that I was talking about earlier there that I've reused those lower gaskets. Yeah, it's worked a treat. A little messy, but yeah, did the job. Uh, other noteworthy things is just the gasket here. So that's just perforated metal intake gasket. I bought it from the local parts shop. And yeah, it's worked fine. I usually just put a little bit of graphite compound on this and it helps seal it up and it's worked really well. This scallop that you notice over here is from our original mock-up of the water to air intercooler that we mounted on the bottom side of that six millimeter top plate. And yeah, we abandoned that idea just to reliability issues. And yeah, hasn't really been an issue afterwards. It's just something to note. So with that being said, we'll go have a look at the top plate. So here we are at the bench with the six millimeter thick mold steel top plate. The closer I look at this thing, actually, the worse condition it's in. <laughs> Um, the heat proof paint that I used on this thing didn't hold up at all. Um, it's pretty horrible the more I look at it actually, but we've learned from that and we've got aluminium billet plate that's going to go on it next time. So that'll fix that whole rusting issue and happen to paint it anyway. So yeah, it'll look good. Um, other noteworthy things you can see here, the previous design basically to mount that 19 mil thick transmission cooler. Uh, you can see the gasket impression as it goes around it and the fittings here that are slightly on angles to be able to fit barbs originally into these half inch BSP fittings and they had heater hoses that went basically along there into the cooler and along here into the cooler and you can see the previous mounting holes but after I had those couple of little water leaks in there it just basically ruined any confidence that I had in having that design so we've gone away from that and now it. We've got our billet 12 mil aluminium replacement. So the only thing left to do now is to cut off these half inch fittings so we can lay it on top of the other top plate, trace the holes that go around for the mounting to the manifold itself, and then we'll be fitting it onto the car. And there's the finished top plate. So now it's time to put some jointing compound back onto that intake gasket and we'll talk all that down and start installing the intercooler.
So that's all nice and torqued up now. Went all to plan. Looks pretty nice in my opinion. Uh, now the next step is that previous gasket we had on that supercharger you saw tore up. Um, so obviously we're gonna have to make a new one of them. So we'll get on to making that so we can install the intercooler. Okay, so it's the next day now, um, and I've come to a bit of a realization that when I made this top plate here, this port probably should have been completely open, like the intercooler core is, that way it's got the chance to try and cool as much air as it can. It extends this way about another 10 mil, and then it reaches from this edge all the way back to that hole. There's just tape on there, so it didn't have anything go inside the motor overnight. Um, yeah, so unfortunately I'm gonna rip this back off machine that out so it's all open and then we'll whack it back on just that way we give this thing best chance of actually doing something And so you can see there, now we've got that hole opened up in the top plate. So it makes a lot more sense to have it this way, that we've got matching ports, so that way any air that can travel through the end of the intercooler core there will be able to pass out of it and there'll be less restriction. So hopefully that makes a difference. So let's throw this back on the car. Yeah. And just like that, the intercooler is now installed on the car. So it's looking pretty good. Bit of a pan around here. You can see the ports there and the blue RTV. Once the hose is on there, you won't notice that it's blue anymore. Yeah, there's a couple little tags of gasket that I'll end up trimming with a Stanley knife later, but that looks pretty good in my opinion. So we'll probably leave this video at that. So for the next video, we'll be doing the plumbing for all the water lines going to and from and install a new belt and all that. So thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe and I'll catch you next time.